Gonna stand no further. Oh, wait, a wait a minute. Congratulations to Coach Kador. Facebook watching it. Hey guys. Day oh, trip. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Party at LaBerge tonight for Coach Kador. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Oh. I am Nathan Hammer, director of bands at Southern University, and. Dan and Red with Bayou Apparel wanted to make this thing special, and we wanted to surprise you, Coach KR. We really Woo! did. And we, we can't let you be honored without bringing the human jukebox here, because you are truly a staple in the Southern University community, in the Baton Rouge community, and in Louisiana, and we want to honor you. You will always and forever be remembered for Southern University. Thank you for all your contributions and things that you sold into young lives. You made boys into men. And that's what it's really all about. So we're going to celebrate. We're going to honor you. It's still football season, so we're going to play one of the songs that's very popular on campus. Y'all hear some music? Yeah! yeah! Hey, man, let's get a little talking out the side of your neck. Drop major, on you. Run that! Cover your ears. <laughs>
All right, we're going to get out your hair again, Coach Taylor. This is for you. We love, we honor you, and we respect you. I also want to th uh, thank Brian and uh, Carrie with uh, LaBerge for the hospitality and opening the doors up for us. Again, we're going to exit on the Southern University fight song. Let's exit out. One, two, fight song. One, two, band, play. Finished taking his pictures with the fabulous dancing dolls. We'll continue on with the program. Might be a while. That'll be a while. Finally, how about that? We had Laverge tonight celebrating Coach Roger Cato, amazing individual. What a great honor. Amazing event. Celebrating Major League Baseball Southern Star. Get the band over here. Thank you very much, Dad. All right. Well. I'm glad Coach Maneri gets to follow that. <laughs> but, uh, our guest speaker this evening is a guy that really needs no introduction, particularly in this room. Uh, he's already a Hall of Famer. He's already won over a thousand games as a coach. He's already won a, a national championship. He's the uh, leader of a program that's led the nation in attendance for 19 years. Just to give you an idea of how big LSU baseball is, the second closest team in attendance is about 200,000 less people a year than LSU. So uh, he's done a fabulous job, came to Baton Rouge uh, in 2007, won a national championship in his third year, and LSU's won more regular season games in the last five years than anybody in the country. Please welcome to the stage Hall of Fame coach, Mr. Paul Maneri. There is no chance this microphone is going to stay up this high with me, I can assure you of that. Is that better, Kip? Okay. Wow, well, I have to tell you something. I have been asked to speak at a lot of functions in my time here at LSU. This is one of the most special nights that I can ever remember. Between the singing of the Lord's Prayer and the singing of the National Anthem and What's that guy's name again? John? <laughs> <laughs> and that band, Roger, oh my God, what an honor, huh? What an honor, you just gotta be, oh, you gotta be overwhelmed, that's unbelievable. I'm telling you, but you're not gonna, you don't, you don't get to leave yet because we still have a few things to say about you. But what an awesome event, and I have to tell you how thrilled I am to be here, but I have to tell you that the day didn't start off so well for me. See, last Wednesday was signing day, and this past weekend we had a nine recruits, and Friday was our last day of fall practice, so a lot been going on. And haven't seen much of my wife lately. So woke up this morning, and Karen said, you know, I haven't seen much of you lately. How about if you and I just go out tonight and have a nice meal together, just the two of us? I said, oh, honey, I am so sorry. I can't do that. I have something I have to be at. She says, please tell me you're not going to give another talk. 
I said, well, actually, I am. She says, what are you going to talk about, LSU and baseball again? I said, I'm sure those things will probably come up. She said, you know, I've been married to you now for 38 years, and I have come up with one indisputable fact. I said, what's that? She said, you love LSU and baseball more than you love me. Oh. Oh. I said, yeah, but I love you more than football and basketball. <laughs> Soccer. <laughs> you know, we all know Roger is a great coach, but I'm going to tell you what, we also know he's a great salesman. So he calls me up and he says, hey, Paul, I want to ask you a question. He said, every, every time I've heard you speak, you always talk about how proud you are to be an American. And I said, well, I am, Roger. I think we live in the greatest country in the world. He said, well, you must believe that in everything that the United States stands for. I said, certainly. He says, well, you believe in the Constitution? Sure. You believe in the First Amendment? Sure. Free speech? Sure. Well, then I'm going to give you a chance to give one in my honor. And that's how I ended up here tonight. You know, 12 years ago, uh, I was invited to come here to Baton Rouge to be the coach of LSU. But before that, I was the coach at the University of Notre Dame. And there was a time when we had to make a coaching change on our staff. And the first person I called to see if that person would be interested in coming to Notre Dame to work with me was Roger Cador. And unfortunately, he was making way too much money at Southern, <laughs> and he wouldn't do it. I don't think it had anything to do with the cold weather. But uh, just to show you how much respect I have for the man, that was my first phone call to see if Roger would be interested. You have to understand the respect that Roger has nationwide. You know, you're here in this Baton Rouge community, and you know that he's a larger-than-life figure. But he really has a reputation throughout the country, in the Midwest, on the West Coast, everywhere, as really one of the great human beings in our profession. And when I came here 12 years ago, we became good friends. Uh, we spent a lot of time talking together, and talking about different things, and, and uh, there's nobody in this town that I have more respect for and would consider a better friend than Roger. So being here tonight to honor him, is a true thrill for me, I can assure you. The other thing we know, Roger, we don't know about Roger, but I can verify about Roger is what a great fisherman he is. <laughs> right, Rog? I can't, you can't deny this now. Okay, so one day Roger and Ron Maestri and I go out fishing together. Ron Maestri, of course, the great coach from the University of New Orleans, and Gary Risponi took us out and you know, we're going to have a little competition. There was a little <laughs> bit of trash talking prior to us getting on that boat, I have to admit. So, I think they call it the bow. I'm up at the front. Is that what the bow is? Okay, so I'm on the bow of the boat, and I'm casting, and I'm telling my arms getting tired. I'm throwing about 15 lines into the water. I can't get a nibble. And there's Roger at the back of the boat along with Ron Macy, and I swear every time they're throwing the line in, they're pulling a speckled trout back up. And I'm thinking it has to do something with where I'm standing on the boat, but they won't let me get back with them. You stay up there. So finally, what happened, Raj? You caught the biggest fish ever. That's right. And I thought it was like a, a sea monster coming out of the water. I've never seen anything like that. So I told Roger and Mace, you guys just keep hitting those singles in the back. I went right away for the grand slam. I'm done for the day. But it, it just goes to show, you know, what a great friend Roger is and uh, how much fun we could have together. Uh, we both outdid May Street, there's no question about that. Especially since he's not here, we can say that, right, Roger? <laughs> you know, uh, um, when I first got here, uh, Roger called me up and he said, you know, uh, he said, LSU has not been over to play on the bluff in several years. and. Uh, I would like for you to bring the LSU team over to the bluff. So the very first schedule that I put together, which was the second season I was here, we went over out of respect for Roger to play our very first game there. And uh, I'll tell you, they, I, I couldn't believe just how hard that Southern team played, how great they played. They had us on the run for most of the game. We started Lewis Coleman, a major.